Okay, in this video we're going to examine a number of debugging techniques because we're uh, encountering an issue in the great, Greater Goods Grocery Store and uh, we need to uh, work out what's going on. So let me show you what the problem, uh, what the bug uh, manifests itself as. So if we go to our fresh produce category and we add four separate uh, cart items, bell pepper, whoops, we got bell pepper, two bell peppers, a broccoli, cauliflower and carrots. Okay, so we've got five items. Look at this, we're only showing that we have five bell peppers instead of all those other pieces of fresh produce. So uh, it's great if you like bell peppers, but not if you wanted the other ones. So you might think, okay, well how are we going to debug this? So if this uh, was the first time I was encountering this problem, I would probably want to look at the uh, code that paints this table. You know, like we're supposed to have five rows here. What is there anything going wrong there? So let's go to our cart view, and we can see that we're iterating over all the items in cart.items, and we've got the product product ID, which is similar to your books. And so, if we're only painting one row, it must be that we've only got one item in our cart. This looks right. So um, let's see if we can't go back to our browser and just have a look at what's going on in the uh, Vuex store because um, we're supposed to be adding our items. So I've cleared the card again and let's go to our Vuex store and have a look at the transitions of states that are going on as we add carts. So if we add one cart and look at our Vuex store you can see that, and I've been messing previously to this, but if we focus on this, you'll see that we've got one item in our cart. The payload was bell peppers that I just added. And the state has one item in the cart, and the product has one quantity, and it's bell peppers. Okay, so far so good, but now let's add a broccoli. Okay, and let's have a look at the state after adding the broccoli. So... What we're doing is the payload is broccoli and look we've still only got one item here but the quantity has increased to two. So that tells us that um, while we are adding a product it seems like we're adding even though we say we're adding broccoli every time uh, and you know cauliflower and carrots we're really just adding bell peppers the whole time we're just increasing the quantity so something must be going wrong um, with our add to cart uh, functionality. So let's have a look at the add to cart in Greater Goods Grocers starts with a product box I call it where you click on a um, button that has the words add to cart in it and we call add to cart and that calls through to our Vuex store and our Vuex store has essentially it's got an add to cart method uh, sorry action that just calls the add to cart mutation so let's go up to our add to cart mutation this is pretty simple, it just adds an item to the cart and saves it in the local storage. Well, um, let's just for argument's sake, it's probably now something I would do is just double check that we're, what are we storing in local storage, you know? Um, is it the correct cart with the broccoli and the cauliflower or is it all bell peppers in local storage? So you can go to local storage in your browser and just confirm in fact, we've got bell pepper here, and if we parse it, we can see that we've only got one item in the cart, and it's two quantities. So what we're storing in the local storage is still a problem. So have a look here. We're um, basically grabbing the shopping cart out of the state and calling add item. I wonder if we're somehow adding bell pepper here all the time. So let's actually debug in Firefox. So what we'll do is we'll clear our card again and start fresh. Okay, I'm going to choose the debugger here and you'll notice that there's Webpack internal and then Webpack that comes up a second later and inside Webpack we can actually look at all the source code in our system. What we want to do is we want to um, debug and we want to debug our store.js at the add to cart mutation. So let's stop here. 
when we click Add to Cart. So we can continue shopping and let's add our bell pepper. What you'll see here is that we're paused on the breakpoint at line 51. We can see that here. And if you scroll down on the right hand side here, we can see what variables are in scope. So we can see the arguments to the Add to Cart method. Um, we can see what the state is and we can see the product that we're trying to add. So the product that we're trying to add should actually be the bell peppers because that's what I clicked on. So that's good. So now um, let's see if we can't debug into the add item method to make sure what's going on. So let's step in and we'll just keep steady stepping in until we get to our add item. We'll step over. Okay, so let's have a look at this add item method. What we're doing is we're trying to find if this product exists in the cart already. If it does, then we'll just add one to its quantity. If it does not, then we'll make a new cart item for it and add it. And so let's have a look at our scope here now that we're in the add item method in the shopping cart. And we can see that we've got the product that we're adding is indeed going, should be the bell peppers. And we should not be able to find it because this is the cart and the items in the cart is the empty array. So that's because I cleared the cart. So let's step over and we'll see that oh, I stepped into by default. Let's step out of. Let's step over and we should see that existing item in the scope is undefined. So uh, that's because nothing, there's nothing in the cart to begin with. So we're going to make a new shopping cart item for bell peppers, set it in there, push it into the items. We will see that this dot items now has one element in it. And we can have a look at that element. And it should in fact be the product with name bell pepper. And quantity is one. Okay, so nothing's going wrong here. Let's hit play and we should see that we've added the item to the cart. But the real question is, what happens when we choose broccoli? So let me just put another breakpoint here and add to cart. What we've done is we get to our mutation here and we can have a look at what's in scope and we can see that indeed the product that we're trying to add in this scope is named broccoli. Okay, uh, and its product ID is 1002. Let's now hit play and we'll jump to the next breakpoint, which is the beginning of add item in the shopping cart class. Now, um, we're trying to add broccoli and the existing item should not be found because uh, the product ID for broccoli is 1002, the product ID for bell pepper is 1001. So we won't, we're not expecting existing item to um, be, uh, to exist. So let's step over that and have a look. We can see that existing item exists and it looks like we've found the existing item in the cart and there's only one and its name is bell pepper. So despite the fact that we intend to add the broccoli, it thinks that broccoli already exists and the existing item is the bell pepper. So what's going to happen is it's just going to increment the quantity of bell pepper by one. All right, so if we see that, you can see uh, existing item does exist, so we'll just increment its quantity, but that's not what we want. So the question is, why did, why did that happen? So it really boils down to there's only one possible line that the problem could be on. It's line 83. We're trying to find an element in the items array where the item's product ID is the same as the product that we're trying to add's product ID. So let's have a look at these product IDs. So if we look at the items in this shopping cart, the object that's already in there has a product and its product ID is 1001. Then if we have a look at the uh, product that we wanted to add here, it is named broccoli and its product ID is 1002. 
Well, hang on. So it, there's a thousand one already in the cart, and we're trying to add a thousand and two, but it's not working. Why is that? So if you stare for this a little bit, um, you come to the realization that it's actually there's a capital D here, and these are expecting small d's here. Now sometimes you just got to be lucky and spot these things, but uh, uh, otherwise you would set a breakpoint on line 83 and debug this. So that's the problem is product ID with a small d is undefined uh, on these objects. And so undefined does equal undefined and we're getting the existing item true, which is bell pepper all the time. So we're just incrementing the quantity all the time. So then the question is, how should we fix this? Where are our products coming from? Or in the bookstore case, the book. Well, they're coming from the server side. Ultimately, what we're doing is we're getting these uh, product objects from the uh, selected products for the category, which is fresh produce. Very similar to the bookstores, the selected categories, uh, books for the category. So. Um, the observation is is that we're actually serving these objects out from the server side. So let's uh, drop our breakpoints. Drop this breakpoint. Drop this breakpoint. Let's uh, go to the server side code. And we'll go to the business uh, product folder and the product model object. The uh, uh, In the bookstore, the analogous class is a book. And we can see here that... Um, what we've accidentally done is we've defined these um, this variable with a capital D, and we've defined this get product ID uh, with a capital D. And when this object gets turned into JSON, uh, when we send it out through the API, so when we send it out through the API in uh, products by category name, for example, and we return a list of products. Um, we're going to return a list of these product objects and the product objects are going to have capital product uh, product ID with a capital D in them. So let us refactor and rename that product to just product ID and it asks us to do the getter as well. We'll say yes and it asks us if we want to rename the parameter to the constructor. We say yes. This is now product ID small this is product ID small and the getter is product ID small. Now, we need to stop Comhat and restart it to recompile the Java. It's not as nice as uh, the JavaScript side. So let's restart this uh, server side with the fix. Everything compiles, so uh, that's good. And we'll go back to our browser. And what we'll do is clear our card. And we'll continue shopping and let's add our bell pepper, broccoli, cauliflower and carrots. And you should be able to see now that we have our table as expected and we solve the problem. So uh, the techniques that we used for debugging were uh, reading some code um, in the cart.view on the page, realizing that the problem then might have been in the add to cart. So tracing through where in the code the add to cart uh, mutation was happening and then we jumped to the debugger and we opened up our webpack internal and oh, sorry our webpack and uh, we opened up our class that we were interested in which was our shopping cart ultimately and on line 82 we put a breakpoint here and then we um, navigate around and hit our breakpoint and we're, uh, was able to see what variables were in scope. So I hope this video helps you. The uh, debugging works almost exactly the same in Chrome. So um, uh, again, I hope this uh, is helpful as we uh, wrap up the rest of the course. So thank you and I'll see you all on Piazza.